Well, I always, always wanted to make it from the first time when I first read it. I had been given it. I got a, a phone call one morning from Mark Rylance uh, saying that uh, J Jez had written the script that he wanted me to read, that, that uh, if I wanted to direct it, if I wanted to act in it, if I wanted to do both. Uh, Mark had just done Jerusalem with Jez on Broadway. And I'd seen that and knew Jez's writing. Uh, anyway, I had done a fair game that he wrote, he and his brother. And um, so he sent, I said, of course, I'd like to read the script. I read it. And it struck me that, and this became more important as time went on, because it seemed to be more the case that for me, so much of what cinema has become, so much of what storytelling has become, so much of what acting, therefore, has become, has, has a kind of level of contrivance um, that is sort of increasingly become alienating to me as an audience. Um, and so this story somehow, it was, it was almost like, oh, that's what it is I've been looking for. It's something that doesn't feel contrived and is open to uh, being ex it, it made as an expression, not um, made, you know, to impress. Well, as a piece of, you know, when, when I say expression, it tends to be a little bit more nuanced than to, than, than, than wanting to sum it up, what it's about. You know, there are themes of truth and deception that I think are extremely poignant, um, particularly today, um, of, um, um, socioeconomic alienation, uh, criminality, narcissism, um, and then that thing, you know, that some strong, beautiful people have of being able to overcome um, that a culture of that, whether it be a broad culture or the culture within their own home. There's the beautiful side of evil, you know, that we don't want to face as being beautiful. And the fact is that there can be, the bonds of love can be extraordinarily strong and extraordinarily real and totally corrupt at the same time. And that's, you know, the nature of this love story between a, a father and a daughter. I would certainly uh, like to think that that is not at all the relationship that I have with my daughter, um, uh, although the bond of love is certainly common. Who, who are, are our parents and, and how open with who they are have they been with us? You know, and I think that that's a very common theme. Um, you, you know, I, 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 a lot of people, you know, go through life believing they know who their parents are, and even without any kind of cathartic or or, or, or tragic uh, uh, revelation, uh, the mystery increases over time uh, because we assume to be able to know our parents because we are of their blood, and yet everybody is so um, private inside. And I think that in this, this story, you have somebody who had been so abandoned and so deceived that they became a truth seeker, you know, on a cellular level. That was this, this woman's reaction. I wasn't going to make the film in any other way way. I, you know, I would have spent the entire time looking at an actress and trying to, and seeing my daughter's face in it and not being able to, to do it with another actress. Um, it had so locked itself, she had become so synonymous with what I felt this could be as a performance. 
um, which again goes back to this kind of uncontrivance. She doesn't she doesn't tell you what she's thinking, and so you watch her. I find more carefully. Well, it 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 really was that I felt, um, or, you know, when she had initially rejected it, she just, it wasn't a rejection of the project. It was not, it was her not feeling ready and wanting to get some more set time as an actress before she took on something, uh, carrying a movie like this. And certainly, not only as a director, but as a father, you, you, you have no choice but to support that. You don't want to pressure uh, somebody into a situation where they feel they may fail it or uh, and uh, so it really just took you know from my end um, kind of uh, hope uh, that it would turn around at some point um, but within that period of course what there was no I wasn't going to make the film in any other way I you know I would have spent the entire time looking at an actress and trying to, and seeing my daughter's face in it and not being able to to do it with another actress. Jennifer's book and Jennifer became uh, a, a real source and and the, and the main thing was that she was as a writer somebody very supportive of poetic license very understanding of poetic license. And so I never felt that it was being forced back into the structure of the book. I think it always was a conversation uh, where, you know, she was able to help me solve the fictional problems with what the underlying reality. And in many cases, just you know, using the reality or using something metaphorically similar. Uh, yeah, she just became a, a partner. It's just a, the, the grain and color you get with uh, Super 16. Um, it, it, it fits the aesthetic that, that, that pleases this audience, you know, and pleases this audience for this movie, for what I saw in my head. Uh, it had to have that texture, and I, I think that along with all the other things that, that you know, again, I say cautiously, but feel like a wealth of contrivance in cinema today. Um, part of that is the plasticine look of so many things um, that are shot digitally. And, you know, and I think there are times, uh, and there have been some beautifully shot movies digitally. Um, I did it once um, and regretted it. I really regretted it. I don't trust it. I trust film. He is just so endlessly watchable. And, um, and it's, uh, again, another truth machine. And so I, it was a natural thing to ask him to you know, we just did, said, fuck it, this is going to end up being a family affair, let's do it. And, uh, um, yeah, and, and yes, they are very, very different. In, in, in another world, it would have been really interesting to get deeper into the relationship between the brother and sister. Um, but in this case, we were, we were so focused on the father-daughter relationship that, uh, you know, I'm just glad that Hopper was willing to come in and, you know, give us some little gem moments. What I was looking for for this movie the minute some of these people came in the room, I knew it wasn't going to work. Something, something different, something different. And Catherine came up on a, li on a list. And I thought, my, you know, if she wants to come in, have her come in. And in her case, before we spoke, as I saw her walk in the room, I thought, I think I'm going to cast her. There was this feeling of something just right, and and I was so glad that I did because she was um, she, her behavior is just 
not acty to me. Uh, and, and she's a very uh, disciplined, um, you know, hard worker, uh, really takes the job seriously and was so trusting and willing to try anything. I had never worked with a more responsive, inventive, or diligent wardrobe designer than Patty. She, and, and not only in working with me, but with each of the actors. You know, I, I, I would get uh, giggles. When I'm giggling, I know I like something, you know, and I would get giggles a lot when I would see some of the things. And also, it's such a, it's a, it's so, takes so much pressure off you once you learn a trust in one of your key crew members where you know you know before they walk in the door you're going to approve this outfit and and it, and it might just be something that's so much better than what you had in mind and so on so yeah she, she was great and craig sandals boy he he uh I, I felt that we had a really great shorthand um i think that he understood my aesthetic very well very quickly and so that was uh yeah, those were two very key people on that crew. I think that the, the goal of a movie, whether it's a painful story, a triumphant story, the only value a movie can have is that when people leave the theater, they feel less alone in whatever it is. And, you know, so far, you know, with the very limited people who have seen this movie. I think that there's, you know, I have found some ge very genuine responses to it that, that, that make me feel like, you know, the, uh, that we did something good. Among the great singers, the voice that would be, you know, how my soul would be represented if I could sing is Eddie Vedder's. And so the first thing I thought after, you know, when I, well, the first thing I think when I'm thinking about directing any movie at this stage is, you know, where's Eddie's place in this and would he do it? That's the girl I fell in love with, is going into a dark movie theater with strangers and seeing, that, that cinema, that's the girl I fell in love with. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I can be an extreme like with, I might even be in some lust with, some fantastic stuff that, you know, is streaming. There's brilliant writers and brilliant actors doing brilliant things. Uh, sometimes I don't even know how the hell they, they do what they do. But I don't want to marry them. And I want to marry a movie, you know, a, a movie in a movie theater. And, you know, and... I, I, you know, I might be having to count myself, I do count myself extremely lucky to have this movie released theatrically, exclusively theatrically for a time. Uh, but I also may f have to count myself very lucky that I, you know, had a chance when the chance was there. Hey, it's Lisa here. Did you know that the first picture to sweep all five major Academy Awards, winning for Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Director and Best Screenplay, was Frank Capra's It Happened One Night from 1934. The second movie to do the same was One Flew Over the Cookie Nurse from 1975. Do you like my t-shirt? You can get one for yourself in the description below.